Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Deruzza, and this is the Trust Psyche Podcast on astrology and depth psychology. I'm a psychotherapist, astrologer, and teacher, and you can find me at trustpsyche.com where you can begin studying astrology with me today. Thank you so much for being here with me. I really appreciate you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. The history of astrology is the story of humanity awakening to its place in the cosmos and thereby navigating its relationship to the divine. That story continues with us today as part of an unbroken lineage stretching back to the earliest of our species, able to be animated once again and always deepening communion of above and below. Today is January 18th, 2022, and this is episode 28. I come to you today as Mercury has already stationed retrograde in Aquarius conjunct Saturn and square Uranus. Mercury stationed retrograde on January 14th 2022 at 10 degrees Aquarius and will retrograde back into Capricorn to 24 degrees and station direct right after the Lunar New Year on February 4th. Mercury is conjunct Saturn and today there'll be a lot of Mercury Saturn coming through but it's also square Uranus as we are in the heart of the Saturn square Uranus in Aquarius and Taurus using the orbs that I do in archetypal astrology of 10 degrees for world transits for a square. The Saturn square Uranus began in November of 2020 and comes to full completion by January of 2023 with exactitudes of Saturn and Uranus in both 2021 and this year, 2022. So we're in the middle of a two-year transit and this particular Mercury retrograde is happening on that Saturn square Uranus. So it's a window into both where we've gone over the past year and a window into the coming year. The current Mercury Saturn conjunction really came in at the new year. Uh, Mercury entered into Aquarius on January 2nd. So Saturn and Mercury then became in the same sign. And it actually technically doesn't get exact until March 2nd. So after the retrogradation is over. And then the completion of that transit will be by March 10th. So we're looking at a solid three months of a Mercury conjunct Saturn with periods of it being more close, um, more exact, more potent within there. However, I really do see this as a three-month transit versus what typically is only a week. And this is part of what's really special about interplanet retrogradation is it elongates the portal of that particular archetypal energy or combination, right? That cycle of time, which is usually rhythmically within the cosmic clock of our solar system a week, now elongates, prolongs itself, sustains itself, for an entire three months. And that changes the nature of that combination because of the elongation of the time period of its activation. And that makes it more important. It makes it a special time. It makes it a unique time and therefore a time that we want to pay more special close attention to with greater curiosity. And when an inner planet like Mercury activates an outer planet transit, as is the case here with Saturn square Uranus, we're looking at a, a greater opening and coming to the foreground in its pronunciation of the Saturn square Uranus. Now, I want to offer one other thing here, which is the eclipses of 2022 are all happening on the Saturn square Uranus. So the nodes are in this moment one second 
of moving into Scorpio North Node. I'm, I'm excuse me, Taurus North Node and Scorpio South Node. One minute. We are on the precipice right now of that shift. So the eclipses this year that are happening in Taurus Scorpio are forming a T-square with the Saturn square Uranus, which will get exact multiple times throughout 2022. As a matter of fact, Saturn squaring Uranus is exact in October of 2022, right near the eclipses that are going to happen at that time. So first, the first eclipse of this year is April 30th, and it's a partial solar eclipse. Then the second eclipse is on May 15th, 16th, and it's a total lunar eclipse. And then six months later, on October 25th, we move into a solar eclipse, and then on November 8th, a total lunar eclipse. And again, all of these are happening on the Saturn square Uranus. So 2022, as far as outer planets go, is mostly focused on Saturn square Uranus in combination with Jupiter conjunct Neptune and Pisces. The history of astrology is a Saturn Uranus phenomenon. Saturn is history and Uranus is astrology. And when these two planets come together in the collective world transits, there tends to be within the field of astrology and astronomy a greater focus on the history of astrology. So that's why this year, Trust Psyche School is teaching the course, the astronomy and cultural history of astrology in keeping with the times. And Travis Deruza is going to be teaching this. And the reason why Travis is teaching this is because he's a scholar of philosophy and religion Right? He did both his master's and his PhD at the California Institute of Integral Studies, where he studied with Rick Tarnas, and he devoted himself to understanding the history of philosophy and religion, and has now devoted that same level of scholarship to the history of astrology. Let me put it into context for you. Um, he has read over 5,500 pages worth of books and some articles on the history of astrology and astronomy. So I feel extremely grateful that Travis is bringing his scholarship and his beautiful intellect of his Mercury and Gemini at the Midheaven in the ninth house, conjunct um, Venus, <laughs> opposite Uranus, right? So he has a Mercury-Uranus opposition and he has Mercury trine Saturn. So to have Mercury-Uranus, that kind of brilliance of mind that loves to think about and devote oneself to astrology in a very disciplined, historical, um, well-read, well-thought-through manner of the Mercury-Saturn, right? The same energy that's in the sky right now. And I am so impressed by the devotion that Travis has brought to understanding the astronomy and cultural history of astrology, which maps the evolution of human consciousness. That's what we're really looking at here. Because astrology has constantly evolved alongside our understanding of astronomy and our cultural beliefs about our place in the cosmos the rich backstory of our art helps make us more grounded practitioners and offers new possibilities for creative retrieval in the present. So you can hear Saturn and Uranus in there, grounded practitioners, Saturn, and new possibilities for creative retrieval, Uranus. The story of astrology is very much the story of humanity awakening to its place in the cosmos. So the astronomy and cultural history of astrology begins with the most distant echoes of our species waking up to 
and beginning to make sense of the solar and lunar cycles in which we are embedded. These early discoveries were encoded in megalithic stone circles dating back as far as 10,000 BCE. Places like Stonehenge were used to track the timing and paths of the sun and the moon, and even to predict eclipses. That's right, we have been predicting eclipses for at least 10,000 years. That's incredible. And stone circles are a worldwide phenomenon, and insofar as they represent the earliest documented log logical ritual interactions with the heavens, they upend the long-standing idea that astrology only begins in Mesopotamia, right? So this is a Saturn-Uranus radical breakthrough in studying history in seeing that our ancestral roots with the heavens goes back before we thought it did. This is a very Saturn-Uranus phenomenon that we see. Sumerian celestial omens and the Mesopotamian zodiac introduced crucial features of what we would today identify as astrology. For thousands of years, the kings of Babylon employed political astrology in the course of governing and waging war. Meanwhile, in Egypt, astral theology led priests to develop precise nocturnal timekeeping techniques for religious ritual by tracking the rising and the culmination of the stars found in 36 portions of the sky, the deacons. So by going in and understanding how astrology moved th through each epoch and each culture, we understand how we got what we have today in the way that you practice, whether that's archetypal astrology, evolutionary astrology, Hellenistic astrology. This shows us where we get our understanding and our practice of the heavens. So the synthesis of the Mesopotamian focus on the ecliptic the Egyptian focus on the angles, and Greek philosophical thought laid the groundwork for Hellenistic astrology, which solidifies most of the major concepts of contemporary astrology, including the meaning of the planets, signs, houses, and aspects. The enormous empire created by Alexander the Great, stretching from India through the Middle East and Greece to North Africa, permitted this cross-cultural melting pot. Hellenistic astrology grew and developed throughout the Roman Empire and the rise of Christianity alternately embraced and outlawed by the powers at hand. So this is an epic storytelling and that's exactly what this course is going to be about is an epic storytelling of the history of humanity seen through our connection with the heavens and our understanding of astronomy and, and astrology. Right. With the fall of the Roman Empire, the Western world entered a state of decline in learning during the Middle Ages. Deprived of the educational underpinnings necessary to cast charts, astrology followed suit. Meanwhile, the astrological tradition flourished and evolved in the Islamic Empire, just as the Renaissance was triggered by the reintroduction of Greek learning via Arabic sources, so too were astrological texts reintroduced during this period, leading to a great rebirth of astrology enriched by its passage through the East. And again, this is a Saturn-Uranus phenomenon where we see old texts discovered or old texts translated that leads to a rebirth of astrology culturally. And astrology ebbs and flows or rises and falls during each epoch and culture. And it's like a passing of the torch around the world and through each era. And it rises and it falls and it rises and it falls. So while the Enlightenment would eventually lead to a scientific skepticism that largely dismissed astrology, it was in fact astrology itself that drove the early search for greater astronomical precision. And this is the connection, one of them, between astrology and astronomy. Many of the major figures of the scientific revolution were interested in astrology, magic, or the occult, including Copernicus, Brahe, Kepler, and Galileo. After its second death, astrology would be revived again in the modern era via theosophy and the new age, eventually finding a friendship with depth psychology that it keeps today. 
right? Which is a large part of what we do here at Trust Psyche is the combination of archetypal astrology and depth psychology rooted in understanding this historical relevance. So I hope you'll join us for the Astronomy and Cultural History of Astrology. You can go to trustpsyche.com and on the homepage or under courses, go to the course, read about it. Um, Whenever you're listening to this podcast, you can take this course. We're going to do it live for 10 weeks starting February 6, 2022 on Sundays from 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time and it runs through April 10th. However, all of our courses on Trust Psyche or the majority of them are evergreen, meaning they stay up forever. So you don't have to be there live. You can always take it recorded at your own pace and schedule. You can also take it recorded live. If you want to be there in real time, but you can't show up to the classroom or you don't want to or whatever, you can also be there and get the course each week. And so we really hope that you'll join us because I think this is a course that I have always needed and wanted to take and was never offered. And now it is. And so I'm, I'm extremely grateful to Travis for what he has done here to birth this and bring this forward there's also going to be incredible um imagery that he's accompanying with all of this so lots of images to help us see um these stone the the stone circles and the bone carvings and everything um that we have discovered and also um wonderful pdfs just to really help um with the astronomy and um, really cool sky watching. You know, he's gonna have you do sky watching and actually go out and look at the sky and have um, beautiful experiences. So what I wanna do here in focusing on this Mercury-Saturn conjunction and the Saturn square Uranus of the history of astrology, um, I just wanna bring forward um, some of what I'm seeing right now with the Mercury Saturn in particular. Um, That's what's really calling to me. And in the future, I'm going to do a more in-depth analysis of the Saturn Uranus. Mercury Saturn um, definitely can be the study of history. Mercury is the mind. It's also education and what we want to learn about, what we want to focus our mind on to understanding. And Saturn is history. So That could be, for example, this course, the history of astrology, but it also can be looking at our own personal history, right? The archetypal combinations in their multidimensionality allows us to symbolically understand them at one level and then apply that same symbolic essence to other levels of being. So as much as it can be the study of cultural history or the history of humanity, it also can be the study of our own history. So Mercury-Saturn can be a time period where we slow down and take the time to get a better understanding of where we come from, who our ancestors are, who our parents are, who our grandparents are, a better understanding of our childhood and childhood home or homes, the places in which we became a person and so mercury saturn is that introspection and saturn is about slowing down mercury retrograde is about slowing down and the two together creates a certain um, mood and pace of slowing down for that introspection and contemplation around everything historical So it can be cultural history, it can be personal history, it could also be the history of a discipline that you're interested in. For example, maybe you want to read about or study the history of psychology, or maybe you want to study and read about the history of the I Ching or the Tarot, or perhaps you want to study or learn about the history of Qigong, right? Mercury Saturn is the aspect of the student who is there to, in a disciplined way, learn and understand the historical relevance and context of how the present moment came to be. It also very much can be a curiosity of architecture. So it can be a time period where we become more interested or curious in architecture. Now, that could be, you know, the literal architecture of a building or of a city. Mercury-Saturn has a lot to do with mapping 
looking at maps, understanding maps. However, it could also be trying to understand the architecture of your family system or the architecture of your business, of trying to understand the parts and the pieces that make up the whole and systematically categorizing and looking at how each piece creates the whole system. Mercury Saturn is the microscopic view. It's where the vision gets tuned in, focused on small parts and really trying to understand each and every piece like a puzzle and how it fits together. And then the ability to understand the architecture or the infrastructure of whatever system it is that you're looking at, whether that's a physical building or the metaphorical building of your relationship with your partner or your children or your parents or your workplace. So Mercury Saturn is a very disciplined mind that is extremely curious about on a very practical level how things work and fit together. Mercury Saturn is also a time period of editing. It's the editorial mind. So that then could be the actual experience of editing a body of work that you've already created. Mercury Saturn is that way, but Mercury retrograde, we see overlap here, is also that way. Slowing down to review and rewind things that you've already written, things that you've already thought, things that you thought you already knew, and getting another look, getting the hanged man upside down, inside out, other view through the looking glass perspective of what has already been taken as reality or as fact. Mercury Saturn is very concerned with factual knowing. It's very linear and logical. However, it's also about problem solving and taking another look at any problems or challenges that you have in your life right now and taking your time to methodically work it through in researching and understanding what's going on there. It's about resourcing the mind to get clarity of thought and vision. And that takes time, that takes patience, takes devotion and commitment to being with whatever that problem might be. We have to watch out for narrow-mindedness. We have to watch out for being overly judgmental and critical as Saturn is the superego that comes in through the mind towards oneself or others and can potentially get very rigid, calcified, and dogmatic. When that is happening, we can slow down and get curious about what's underneath of that, which typically are emotions of feeling either insecure, inadequate, or full of shame which we all have and we all go through. The brilliance of Mercury Saturn in its editorial mind can be, yes, editing things. Like I have been editing my website, editing my office policies, taking another look and reviewing the body of work that creates the guidelines and rules and structures by which I operate as a therapist or as a teacher, as a practitioner, and getting clear within myself are these up to date? Is this a true reflection of where I'm at now to help me be in right relation with myself and those around me? However, that same editorial mind, which I've applied to my website or to my office policies, can also be metaphorically taken in the editorial mind of taking the time to review and revision your boundaries, to review and revision your ethics to review and revision your morality, to review and to revision your work, your work in the world as in your career, your vocation, Saturn, but also your work in the world as in your karmic work. Mercury Saturn has a tendency and its Mercury retrogradation to bring up 
old unfinished business that has not been resolved and it is seeking closure. Mercury Saturn likes to seek things through to closure, to bring closure and resolution when and where it can to old unfinished business. So it very much is about completion. And in that square to Uranus, it's about completion and resolution of old business in order to move forward. Uranus wants to move forward and Saturn deals with the past. So when Mercury goes over Saturn Uranus, we bring closure to the past of unresolved business in order to move forward and to be free and liberated into the future and what comes next. Mercury Saturn is very focused on timelines. It loves to map time. So in that, it creates goals on a timeline of when to complete things. So whatever your personal goals are right now or your professional goals are right now, to actually write those out, Mercury Saturn is very diligent and it loves um, to create lists and it loves to map things out and to actually write out what are your goals right now and the timelines for yourself to accomplish those goals. But Saturn is also about being practical and realistic right? It's not um, necessarily like pie in the sky. It has, Saturn is much more about the physical earth and being really grounded. And so Mercury Saturn is about practical, realistic goals on a timeline and structuring your life, the time and how you use it in order to accomplish those goals on that timeline. And that's a really powerful way to use this energy and to really be with it right now. So Mercury Saturn has a lot to do with um, refining how you perceive things and think about things and distilling it and prioritizing it to what is most essential and most foundational and basic to your life. So it has a lot to do with trimming the fat. Um, It's a very lean uh, combination Uh, It it loves precision and being concise. And so anywhere where there's excess in your life right now, Mercury Saturn has a way of cutting that down and bringing it back to Earth or bringing it back to center. I think that this year of 2022 is very powerful for all Saturn Uranus themes, particularly with these eclipses really hitting them strong in both the spring and the fall or in conversely, inversely, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. And um, I think that this Mercury retrograde on the Saturn square Uranus is a window into what some of this energy is asking of each of us for this year. Mercury Saturn is a question of what is it that you're willing to be devoted and committed to in your practice? What is your practice for 2022? And Have you taken the time to get clear on what you're committing yourself, what you're willing and able? That's so important with this energy, what you're willing and able to do. And then taking the steps necessary, particularly by the time Mercury goes direct after the lunar new year uh, in early February, to implement and actualize the insights that you got around how it is you need to structure your life and your time in order to create the space. Saturn is space and it's also time to create what it is that you want to create. The willingness and ableness to do what it is that you want to create and then using the resources available to you in your life to align with that and make it happen. And that's the beauty of Saturn as a sacred vessel for the Uranian brilliance and creative muse to come through in its flashes of insight, revelation, and epiphany to inspire us to create from a place of deep integrity 
Saturn is the depths of our integrity, and Uranus is the place of creation. And when the two come together with clarity and purpose, so much is possible. I'm going to end here for now. I hope that you join us for the astronomy and cultural history of astrology. I want to thank you for being here with me. I have been on this astrological journey, this life, for the past 14 years. I'm halfway through an entire Saturn cycle with this journey. And it is a great honor, blessing, and surprise that my husband would come into my life and pick up the mantle of astrology. And it was in no way planned by our conscious minds or egos this year for me to put down astrology, spirit, indicated very clearly that it was time for me to stop giving readings. It was a decision that I took a very long time to make, to make sure that it was right relation for me, and it is, so that I can focus on giving time and space to my psychotherapy practice where I include astrology and to teaching astrology. And that is one embodiment of this Mercury Saturn square Uranus is the clarity around that and then setting up my practice to be a living manifestation and reflection of that truth while at the very within the very same month that that decision was made um, Travis decided to begin after 14 years of studying astrology with me with Rick Tarnas and (laughs) 5,500 plus pages of just the history of astrology text. It doesn't even include all the other astrology books and lectures that he's listened to, which has been countless, um, to give readings. And that's what he does now. And I just, I can't believe it. I can't believe that I'm married to um, a professional counseling astrologer. I, I, I didn't see that one coming. And Saturn Uranus has a lot to do with the twists of fate. Uranus comes in as the surprise twist of the Saturnian fate. And so we do our best to humbly Saturn, listen Mercury to what that twist Uranus of our fate and destiny Saturn is. And then best within right relation, align ourselves with that. And from that place, I promise you, magic happens. Sending all my love and blessings. I'm Jessica Deruzza. This is the Trust Psyche Podcast. Thank you for being here with me. We are dreamed into existence. What we do with that dream is up to us. How we dream is as important as what we dream. For the what of the dream knows itself through the how.